Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. You have, of course, found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. Unfortunately, the uh, the uh, string that uh, ties the tin cans together over at the station uh, broke, and so you've got a uh, <laughs> for all those you're still hanging around. Uh, you got a heap and helping of uh, the best of, but uh, uh, our 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 uh, resourceful put it that way, a resourceful producer has uh, tied the string back together, and now we are live. So if you've been, you know, and I know there are dozens of you out there just just champing at the bit to uh, call in 774-2424, area code 616-774-2424, and you can uh, get your question live. That's right. We are live uh, now that uh, that we get them tin cans fixed. You know, I mean, what can you what can you say? It's a, it's an era of economy, so um, should have gotten a high quality string. But there you are. Anyway, six one six seven seven four twenty four twenty four. That's the number to call. I'd like to get your question on the air. Of course, you can always go to the website, David Carrier Law, David Carrier Law dot com. That's right, dot com. David Carrier Law dot com, and uh, you can uh, put your question there. We got videos over there. You got all kinds of stuff, you know. I mean, come on, it's like Christmas around here. Um, anyway, one of the things I have to say, one of the things that has uh bothered me uh for as long as I've been doing this work, you know, 33 years now, that's a long time. Uh, but one of the things that's always bothered me has been um the degree to which people, regular folks, are very much ill served, poorly served. Um, when it comes to estate planning, uh, most of what you get doesn't work. And I mean, 90 plus percent of it doesn't work if you're doing the trust based planning. Um, and everybody knows it. your banker knows it, your lawyer knows it. everybody knows it doesn't work. Uh, but you still get sold a bill of goods uh, along the way of, oh, it'll avoid probate um, when they know to a moral certainty that it will that it will not. Now, I figured that out about six months into the gig, about six months after I started on my own. I realized that people, uh, I was like, well, how can these things work? People aren't doing that. There's no follow through here. And the answer was, oh, don't worry about it. You'll you'll get the probate through the will. And it turns out that that now is part of the certification. If you ask, and I've had three attorneys who have been through the course and asked, and the answer was the same every every single time. Well, well, that's what the pour over will is for. You know, if you listen to, uh, there are some talk show guys out there, you know, financial type guys. And it's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about the trust. Uh, that's what the will is for, and uh, the will will put it in the trust. What they're not telling you is that the will has to go through probate in order to do that, which seems to me to be a complete betrayal of the trust, that of the confidence that clients have in the attorney to avoid probate. Like, isn't that the point? Isn't that what everybody wants to do is avoid probate? And it seems like a good thing. It is a good thing to avoid probate. Why not? You know, it's less expensive. It's all all those uh, all those good things. I don't think that's the most important thing. And we can talk about that. But here's what's troubled me is there's no way to do this on the cheap. You, you can't you, you can't deliver. What people actually need. Right. Be, because everyone's expecting everyone expects a certain price range. Right. You know, five thousand or so, something like that. Um, And you'll get your documents, maybe less, maybe free. You know, you go online, it's free, 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 free. Okay. You know, this is an old saying, if it's free, I'll take three. Um, But it doesn't work. And you can spend the money and it still doesn't work. And what I've discovered over the years is it's expensive, relatively expensive, not relative to what you're saving, but relatively expensive. It's out of line with what other people charge uh, to do the job the way the job needs to be done. As a consequence of that, I don't have anybody complaining that the trust doesn't work because it does work. And I'm not, I don't hear any complaints that we're not thorough uh, because we are thorough. And I'm not hearing, oh, uh, we needed long-term care and it didn't, you know, we didn't get it because you did. I mean, we very aggressive about this stuff when, um, whenever we get confronted with a situation where they say, hey, um, 
like a denial in the Medicaid arena or something. We always take it on appeal. If the circuit court says it doesn't work, we go to the court of appeals and guess what? It works, you know? So we're, we're not, that's not the point. The point is in order to do this stuff correctly, you can't do it for free and you can't do it on the cheap. You can't, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. You got people who, 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 who it's just too expensive. I mean, they just can't get around it. You know, you just can't accept it. Okay, fine. So my, my, my conclusion for the last 30 years has been, all right, we're going to lose 30%, a third, let's say just say a third of the people who come to us. We can't help them. And the reason we can't help them is not that there aren't things that should be done, could be done, would be done, but because the the price is just a tremendous sticking point, they just can't can't get their heads around it. And I've always refused. I, I I just won't do it. You know, if somebody says, "Well, don't include this part and don't include that part and don't include the other part," that make it actually work. And it's like, <sighs> how am I supposed to go to bed at night? And you know, but on the other hand, you see, this is the thing, because if we weren't doing the things differently, if we weren't doing all the things we're doing then, yeah, you could cut the fee. I could, you know, hey, we are extreme. <laughs> We're extremely efficient. You know, we've had to be. Um, you know, we can we can beat anyone on price if we give up doing the right thing, if we give up doing what needs to be done, okay? You know, I, and as it is, I mean, we're doing very well. Thank you very much. And we do more of this than practically anybody. And so... Um, and delivering the quality and all the rest. And so, you know, there's lots of people get that this is what it costs because why? Because that's, you know, you can go, you know, we, it's routine for us to get people who six months ago been in a state plan with somebody else. And then they come by and it's like, well, here's the, here's the problem with that estate plan. It's like, okay, now I got to spend the money again. And they do. I mean, that's, that is not, Oh my goodness! Never heard of that before. I mean, it's uh, it happens. Still, in all, there's there's probably a good thirty percent, forty percent of the people who come to us, we go through it, and it is not a question about whether or not this is the right thing. It is the right thing, and it's not a question about whether or not they should save. Yeah, they should, and all the rest. And logically, okay, it makes sense, but just can't get around. Just can't get around the. Um, the, the price thing. Okay, so what are we going to do about that? And, and like I say, for 30 years, my answer is, I don't know how to get around that. Either you do the work or you don't do the work. And if you don't do the work, then you're lying. It's a bunch of BS. It's just nonsense to say that you're going to avoid probate because you won't. And everybody knows you won't. Unless you're an engineer and then you'll do it on your own. But except for the four or five percent of the population that are engineers or married to them. And no one else does this stuff. Surgeons don't. Accountants don't. Lawyers certainly don't. You know, regular folks don't. They they think that they've got their set with the trust and all, which they're not. It's just BS. It's just not even true. So that's been my challenge. How do I keep the promise? It's an important promise, I think. How do I keep the promise? And at the same time, not turn away folks. I mean, why should you lose your house to long-term care? Why should you lose your life savings? To, this is my question, right? To long-term care. And it's like, well, I can't afford it. Well, well, yeah, but here's how it all works. Logically, you can. But emotionally, that's a that's a real, that's a difficult issue. And like I say, for years, it's been a, a real People come, they trust me. They say, I say, hey, here's how it works. They say, yeah, it is, but can't get around the price thing. I think I've figured out a way uh, to reduce the cost by about half to two thirds, about half to two thirds, and make it possible for everybody to get what they actually need as opposed to what they can quote unquote afford. When we get back, I'm going to tell you exactly how we're going to be, uh, how we're going about it. It's a new, real departure for us. But um, but I'm pretty excited about it. I think it'll work. Well, we'll find. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal 
attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And um, I'm just uh, now, of course, give us a call. 616-774-2424. Uh, that's the number to call. 616-774-2424. We'll get your question, comment, or concern on uh, on the air. Now, uh, or you can always, well, pick up your Sunday paper. I'm in the Sunday paper, you know, on Sunday radio, Sunday paper. Uh, and then again, one more time during the week. And uh, uh, so we do a lot of this outreach type stuff. And uh, for 33 years now, we've been doing what other people will not do, which is to level with you about trust-based estate planning. Uh, that it fails 96% of the time, according to one survey. Uh, and you can't find anybody involved in this who thinks it works more than 10% of the time. Um, you know, I've heard I've heard some financial, oh, 80%. Well, maybe. Uh, I doubt it. I think it's closer to uh, uh, 90%. It fails, you know. And like I say, this is not a mystery to anybody who's been involved in it and won't be a mystery to your kids when they get whacked with the probate. And it just so happens to be the way that attorneys are being trained uh, through the, you know, the various courses. This is how they do it. I mean, <laughs> how do I know? Well, I've had three attorneys go through the course. Three of the attorneys in the firm, and it's the same story every time. When you ask about the steps that are necessary to make the trust work, right? everybody's like, oh, well, you got a memo. And everyone knows the memo doesn't work. Everybody knows that. And then what they say is, well, that's what the will is for, to put the stuff in the trust, which, of course, means probate, which is what you did a trust to avoid. It's BS. It's just total BS. It's always been BS, and everybody knows it. And if you don't know it, you learn. It took me about six months to figure it out. I believed it, you know, when I was working at the big firm. And it was, oh, yeah, the memo. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, you know, you believe it. And then when you actually deal with people and you realize nobody's doing this, uh, it was a that was a bit of an awakening, uh, an awakening uh, for me. And so since then, we've always concentrated on, well, how do we. How do we crack the nut? And the answer has been to uh, go through a one on one process, one on one, um, uh, one on one with the attorney. We do the workshops, you know, it's just a group thing. Uh, but then it's always been a one on one from then on. OK. And you get your own paralegal who works with you to make sure that everything is actually in your trust. It takes two, eh, two to six months is reasonable. Um, we have people who take a lot longer than that, complex assets, or they're just not, you know, motivated. Because, because look, when, you, when you're doing the estate planning and you talk to other people, I know what they're saying. Well, I just signed it one time. Why do you have to, you know, these guys are making you do all this stuff, not necessary. My trust will be fine, blah, blah, blah. They, they have no idea what they're talking about, but boy, are they confident talking about it. Drives you nuts. But there, there it is. I mean, that's, that's what we're up against. And uh, we, uh, the, the problem is that, and, and this is how we feel about it at the firm, right? If, if someone doesn't work, move forward with us, my thing is you should feel guilty as hell. Not you, you know, whoever was working with the person, you know, whether it's myself, I feel it, uh, and the other attorneys do as well, because if we haven't presented this in a way that you take advantage of it, we just cost you the cottage. We just cost you your life savings, probably cost you your house as well, uh, because that's what's at stake in the real world. I mean, the way this, not BS, in the real world, that's what happens. People lose their houses. They lose their life savings. You know, it all goes to, uh, it all goes to long-term care, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to, but the one of the keys, one of the most expensive things that we do, which is results in the fee, you see it in the fee, is getting the stuff in the trust. Okay, and it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, one attorney, one client. That's that's the way we've always done it, and it's a sticking point because you, you know, you know what it's like trying to hire people these days, right? If you don't look around, very difficult to get good people very good, difficult to keep them on board health insurance the whole night it's it's a worse than it's ever been so how do we keep good people on board how do we deliver the service and how do we cut the price in order to make this work 
And that's that's been that's been the challenge right along. And it's a big challenge. So here's what we come up with. And I have to say, uh, <laughs> I can't I cannot claim pride of authorship on this. This was not my idea. Um, most of my ideas are not my ideas. Most most of the things we do are not my ideas. I, I you know, I keep my eyes open. And if somebody else is doing something that seems like a like a good thing, um, you know, I have no. I have no compunction if, it, if it's going to serve client. I, I'll do it. I'll do it. So so here's our test case. Um, and this is going to be on the 21st of February. 21st of February is when we're rolling this out uh, up in uh, Big Rapids. Now, some of you know that I write in the newspaper. You know, we have a full page uh, twice a week. Um, it's a lot of, and it's, there have been a couple of reruns. You, you may have noticed we reprinted uh, a couple of things. But um, mostly it's new stuff. And we're across the state. Well, I can't afford to send attorneys across the state. So th so this is why we're experimenting in, in Big Rapids up at Ferris State. So at Ferris, uh, we've got uh, classroom all day long. Three, we're going to do three of these. And the idea is, what if instead of doing the one-on-one, -on -one, right, what if we could have a process where, where you got everything? You didn't have to cut corners. No cutting corners. We're not going to cut corners on this. We're not going to back off of uh, a trust that meets the long-term care need. We'll never back off of that. Never back off of uh, making sure the trust actually works, okay? But then the question becomes, well, how can you do that and not have quality suffer? How can you, how can you do that? Well, and, and again, I wish I had thought of it if I didn't. Uh, a buddy of mine, said, well, look, what if we, over in Pennsylvania, um, what if we took people from one to the next? And his idea was it's kind of like an airline. It's kind of like going to Florida. You want to go to Florida, right? You can get on Allegiant or Spirit, I guess, or JetBlue. I don't know JetBlue, but anyway, Allegiant <laughs> or Frontier. Frontier, I've, I've used those are my go-to places. But you, the seat doesn't go back, Right. And you got to bring your own peanuts on board and like that. OK, uh, but it's a cheap flight and it's a direct flight and it's just as safe as anything else. So you can do it that way or you can do the you can go Delta, right, which is more expensive, but it'll get you there. Or you could even hire your own airplane one on one. Right. Which is kind of the most expensive. But you get there. I mean, and you're going to get there whichever way you go. It's just that. One way is a lot less expensive than the other, right? Because you have to do more things on your own. You have to bring your own peanuts. Uh, you know, if you want um, if you want extra services and stuff, you got to pay for those separately. But what if you could cut the cost of getting the estate plan that you really need, not one that's BS, not one that's not going to that's going to fail you, going to fail your family. What if you could get what you really need and everything that you really need, but we could figure out a way to deliver that for less that's my challenge and when we get back at the top of the hour i'll, I'll tell you exactly how we're going to go about this it's an experiment we'll see if it works if it doesn't work it doesn't work but i'm very hopeful that uh that we can really pick up that 30 to 40 percent of folks who we haven't been able to serve so far that's that's our goal you're listening to the david carrier show i'm david carrier your family's personal attorney Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And you have found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. So give us a call, why don't you? 616-774-2424. 616-774-2424. We'll get your question, comment, or concern on the air. Of course, you can always... Um, uh, what do you call it? Go to the uh, website. Yeah, the interwebs. You've heard of that, right? The uh, computers and all, all that good, et cetera. Uh, that would be davidcarrierlaw.com or drop me an email, david at davidcarrierlaw.com. We'll get your question uh, on the air. I'd love to, uh, love to get the emails. So um, here's the deal. Uh, for 33 years, I've been at this. Um, it took me about six months after I left the big law. Yeah, I did the military thing and all that. That was wonderful. Thank you, American taxpayers. I had a wonderful, wonderful experience. I really enjoyed it. And when you say thank you for your service, I feel a little guilty because I did. <laughs> I had a pretty good time. 
uh, when I was in. It was challenging. It was interesting. And, you know, I, I really feel like uh, when they say, thank you for your service, I'm like, thank you for letting me have that service. That was, um, you know, that was that was all right um, in the JAG Corps. So anyway, um, I did all that and then um, went with the big law firm and learned basics of uh, estate planning, you know, some more stuff. And what I discovered about six months, you know, and they booted me out the door after a couple of years, well-deserved. Um, they should have done it earlier, um, but I'd have done it earlier, frankly. Um, but uh, they were very, very nice. I mean, I'm not complaining. You understand that? I am not complaining. Um, but what I learned about what well, was about trust-based estate planning and all the rest, and what it took me about six months is that it's all a bunch of BS. The the assumptions that they use and frankly justify with paper um, are not true the vast majority of the time. Most of the time, it isn't true. See, there's, there's, there's four kinds of statements that people can make, right? There's four things that you can say. The first is the truth. And that's when you look at something uh, there's reality there, and you say, uh, here's reality as I see it, okay? You know, you look outside, it's raining. You say, it's raining, okay, or it's not raining or whatever, you know, or the carpet is brown or the walls are green or whatever it is. You know, you're you're reporting, and you're doing it in such a way as to relay accurately what you're saying. That's what we call truth. Isn't that truth? I mean, people want to argue about, but, but but we know what is is. I mean, that's that's just more BS, frankly. All right, you know what it is. Um, so that's truth. Then there are mistakes. People make mistakes. They do. Mistakes are when you say something and you believe it's true, but you didn't see it correctly, or you made a mistake. I mean, people make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Okay. It's not a matter of um, of uh, you didn't care. It's not a matter of you were intentionally trying to deceive. It's a matter of a mistake, an honest mistake. Okay, we live our lives trying to tell the truth, and occasionally we make mistakes. That's fine. Then there's lies, deception, prevarication, you know, whatever you want to call it, lies. This is when somebody tells you something that they know is not accurate. They know that the statement that they're making does not reflect reality. They know it. It's not a, it's not a matter of, oh, I, th I thought that was a rabbit and it turned out it was a bear. Something like this. No, it was like I knew it was a bear and I told you it was a rabbit because I wanted the bear to eat you or something along those lines. <laughs> you get me? It's like I was trying to get you to do and I lied to you. I knew it was false. I knew it was false. When I said it, and I said it anyway, intending you to believe it. Okay? So we've got the truth, which is where you're an accurate reporter. You've got mistakes where you're an unreliable reporter, but you were trying. You were doing your best. And then you've got lies where you are intentionally deceptive, where you're telling something to some bearing false witness against your neighbor. Okay? All right. Well, a, a false witness is not making a mistake. And people in court make mistakes all the time. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. But but they come across as honest and everything else because they are trying to be honest. It's it's the worst thing when you have a mistaken witness. You know, witness who made the mistake, they look sincere because they are sincere. The fact of the matter is they made a mistake. This happens. Um, but then the the easy one is the liar um, because they're they're telling you something that's uh, they're saying something that's not true. And, um, you know, you can generally prove that, right? So anyway, you got truth, you got mistakes, you got lies, and then you got the worst of all. This is my opinion. And this is what most trust-based estate planning is based on. And that is BS. Bull, you know what? Okay? BS. And BS, the person telling you, they might be true. They might be telling you the truth. Or they might be telling you a lie. It just doesn't matter. Okay? They're going to say whatever they need to say to get you to sign on the line, which is dotted. Okay? 
And it's not like they're looking into it. It's not like they made a mistake. It's not like they have any excuse, right? They just don't care. They just want you to do something. And maybe it's because, you know, and, and you can have people, uh, and certainly I would put myself in this category, where at first you believe it. You, you're mistaken. You're wrong, okay, about whether or not these trusts actually work. But you, th you had it what you thought was good authority that they would work, okay? And so when you repeat, oh, these things are fine. Oh, you don't have to worry about this, that, or the other. They're being sincere, but they're mistaken, okay? But it's based, their mistake, the individual person's mistake, is based on BS uh, because it isn't true. And everybody knows it isn't true. And it takes about, took me about six months to figure it out that um, when people were doing the trusts that I prepared for them, they weren't following through with them. I gave them the memo, just like everybody gives you the memo. It says, hey, don't forget to put your stuff in the trust. Well, guess what? No one was putting the stuff in the trust. It just didn't happen. The memo is not to get you to put the stuff in the trust. The memo, the whole purpose of the memo is to provide coverage for the person putting the estate plan together so that later on when it doesn't work, which everybody knows it won't, uh, then they say, oh, but look at the memo. I told you. That's that's the, it's total BS because they, they also know that you're not going to read the memo. That's what's going on. So early on, I decided, well, I don't want to play that game. That's not. <laughs> Fear of hellfire may have had something to do with it. Uh, <laughs> a lot to do with it. But uh, um, so so we started out with trying all kinds of different ways to do funding. And, but you know, making sure your stuff is actually in the trust, making sure your trust actually works. Along the way, I found out that the reason that most people have for doing trust is also BS, but we'll get into that uh, in just a little bit. But the key is the trust don't work. And that you, you don't get any argument out of anybody. They all acknowledge it. The only difference is they blame you. They blame the client for the failure of it to work. Right? And the mechanism that they offer you doesn't work. Everybody knows that. Uh, but again, it enables them to deflect to you the fault. And now it's not their fault. It's your fault. Right? Oh, but you're dead. When you find out about this, you're dead uh, because it's your kids who find out about it. And then it's too late and um, you're gone. Right? So that's what's going on uh, with estate planning, with trust-based estate planning. The problem is that in order to fix it, it's expensive. And this is the, this is the thing I've been butting my head against for 30 years now, 33 years, right? In order to do what actually needs to get done, it costs more. And most people, and this has been my experience, about two thirds of people are like, look, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. They see it, they get it, fine, now we do it. And it's a one-on-one, -on -one, first class operation, you know, we're meticulous, not just meticulous, but, um, you know, we'll work really hard to make sure that it actually happens. The problem is that leaves 30 to 40 percent of folks high and dry. And I hate that. I just hate the idea that someone understands what's going on and doesn't get what they need to get done. And the reason it, they don't get what needs to get done, I'm saying that correctly, is because uh, because of the cost. Is there a way we can get the cost down? And when we get back, I'll explain to you exactly how we've managed to get the cost down. And we're going to we're gonna roll this out. We're going to try it um, up in Big Rapids in, in about two weeks now, a um, week and a half. So when we get back, I'll tell you what my solution to the problem is. See what you think. You're listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Just to, just to kind of recap for those of you tuning in right now, um, if you go to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com, you can sign up for one of our free life plan workshops. Love to see you at a workshop. Uh, or you can drop us an email, david at davidcarrierlaw.com. Now, here's the problem. Most estate planning fails. Everybody knows it fails. And I'm talking trust-based estate planning. Uh, of course, with will-based estate planning, you're not trying to get anything done anyway, really. So what the heck? 
Um, but most trust-based estate plan where you're trying to avoid probate, save taxes, get it to the kids, all that, uh, it fails. And everyone knows it fails. Bankers know it. Lawyers know it. Accountants know it. Everybody knows it except you. Uh, in fact, they teach people, here's how it's going to fail. I and mean, this is the courses that are out there. And the way they justify it is by giving you a memo, which you won't read. And if you did read, you wouldn't understand how to implement it. But that's okay because it provides cover uh, for the attorney later on. So oh, I gave you the memo. Not my fault. Okay, fine. That's the reality. My response to that for the last 30 years, 30 plus years, has been uh, to work somehow to fix that part of the problem, to make sure that your stuff is actually in the trust. And we've worked with financial advisors and we've, we've done all kinds of stuff, follow up calls and emails and, blah, 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 you know, we started small and we got bigger and bigger. And now um, it's one of the most expensive things that we do because it's a completely one on one situation, one funding paralegal to one uh, client. And they spend a lot of time on hold and get it all done for you. But the problem with that is it's expensive to do, all right? especially the funding, very expensive to do. And as a consequence, and we do everything, as you know, as I've said a million times, I think, uh, we do everything on a fixed fee basis. It doesn't matter to us how much you've got or what you're worth or whatever. Our work is the same because our work is the same. All right. There's no addition. We don't charge extra. I mean, if your house is worth a million, okay, we want to get the deed correct. If your house is worth a hundred thousand, well, now we don't care about your deed. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course we do. We got to get that done right too. You have to be meticulous for everybody's assets, right? But the challenge is, has been, you know, 40% of folks who would really benefit from getting this done don't get it done. And the price is the stumbling block because it's expensive to deliver that level of service. Okay, so how are we going to uh, cut the cost? And I've been counseled so many times. I mean, I keep getting this advice. Oh, you guys are just too expensive. You need to cut your fee. Well, I can't cut the fee without cutting the paralegals, without cutting the attorneys who are providing the services. And if we don't provide the services, then I'm like everybody else, a wash in a sea of BS, right? Telling the stuff I know isn't true, right? Or or I have no reason for thinking that it would be true. And in fact, I'm pretty sure it won't be, although there's some small chance that you might do it. Uh, you might actually get your trust to work. So the challenge is, and, and I've always kind of accepted it. It's like, well, you know, if, if they don't want to do it, they don't see the value. Okay, fine. Give up. Give up on it. That has been kind of the way we've done it. Not a satisfying answer, not a good answer, a bad answer, but an answer. So there's a there's a number of fellows I coach, you know, just on a friendly basis, all the rest. And when, <laughs> poetic justice, wouldn't you know that one of these younger guys comes up with this, what I think is a brilliant idea. It's like, here's how you deliver 100% of the service, okay? 100%. Everybody gets done what needs to get. They get everything, okay? It's not a question of, oh, I'm going to cut corners here. I'm gonna cut. There's no cutting corners, okay? There's no cutting corners. You will get exactly what you need, and I mean the whole nine yards. Just stick with us. It will all get done. It will all happen. The trade-off is this. The trade-off is... Instead of being a one-on-one -on -one situation, we're going to do it as a group, okay? And there's, you know, we've got processes to maintain confidentiality and all the rest. Yeah, 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 get all that. And to be thorough, to make sure that you do get absolutely everything you need, right? And it's an open-ended kind of thing. Um, and it enables us, at least this is the test. I mean, I, I have, we haven't done it. I'm telling you right now, this is something that, um, it's just been bugging me so, for so much that price gets in the way of what people need to get done. And it's like, and here's the thing, like people like to go to Florida, right? Well, what if the only way to get to Florida was with a first class ticket? Well, it would price it out of an awful lot of people who'd like to get to Florida, right? And for a lot of folks who would like to go to Florida, it will be a strain to do it. If the, there was only one ticket, you know, the... Super duper first class ticket. That was the only thing that you could get. 
right? To go to Florida, a lot of lot fewer people go to Florida, <laughs> myself included. Okay, <laughs> just the way it is. Now, what if though we weren't limited to that? What if you could carry on your own bag, right? Or maybe we charge you ten bucks if you carry on your bag, right? I mean. What if you had to bring your own bag of peanuts? What if, you know, you couldn't ask somebody? What if they didn't give you a, a Diet Coke on the way down? What if you had to bring your own? Now, you could bring your own, but what if? Well, then you've got, instead of just Delta or American or United, right, and only one class, right? Instead, now you've got Allegiant, you've got Frontier, you've got, you know, the other, you got the other folks going on down there. OK, that's the idea. You're going to get to Florida. It's going to be warm and sunny down there. You're going to be happy to have gotten there. But the process is going to be different. And we're pioneering this. We're beginning this February 21st, Ferris State University uh, over there in the um, used to be the University Center. But you can go to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com and um, or call us and we'll, you know, numbers on the website and we'll sign you up for it. Um, but our goal is to reduce the cost at least half and maybe two thirds, depending on what it is, uh, what it is you need. So um, we're, t we're talking about a, a very significant, but we're not cutting corners. See, this is the important, this is the important thing about it. Um, it won't be as convenient. It won't be as, you know, one on one. OK, it won't be. Well, you know, listen, not everybody needs a free bag of peanuts, but you're paying buku bucks for right um that's that's the concept um if you have any questions about it please uh please give us a call but the um but the thing is i've always hated leaving people behind because of the fee and maybe we don't have to now if you want the first class service if you want the the one-on-one -on -one, you've got a business or you've got a rental properties or cottages or you know something like that right then maybe the one-on-one -on -one approach is exactly what you need. It will go quicker. There will be less effort on your part, that's for sure, okay? But this idea, like I said, it wasn't even my idea. It was a, a buddy of mine's idea. <laughs> One of the guys I was telling how to do this stuff, and right? he's like, well, why don't you try this, right? And he'd been doing it the same way I was, you know, the the because that's what I believe in, was the one-on-one, -on -one, super custom, all the rest. Because I just couldn't see how to deliver it a different way. We'll see if it works. It, I mean, his test is, is working. So that gives me some confidence that it will work for, for our folks as well. But that's our next step. That's the next thing we're doing. Um, and uh, like I say, we're rolling it out in Big Rapids up at Ferris. Uh, that's going to be the 21st of February. So if you're interested, just give us a call at the office. Tell us. You know, and say you'd like to sign up for the the February first deal there at uh, at Ferris. There's no char there's no charge um, for the first meeting at all. Well, the music means I need to get out. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. I'll give you a little more detail in the next segment. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And now's the time to give us a call, 616-774-2424. That's 616-774-2424. You know, the best planning in the world is worthless, worthless, uh, unless you can afford it, right? That's the uh, that's the problem. And uh, as I've been saying, uh, most estate planning that we see uh, isn't going to work. Everybody knows it isn't going to work, but people do it anyway. Because uh, of the, you know, the tidal wave of BS that that surrounds it. Okay, in order for a trust to work, and faithful listeners, you already know this, but I'll repeat it. Um, in order for a trust to work, your assets have to be retitled into the trust. We call this trust funding. How many trusts are actually funded? Five percent, maybe, meaning ninety-five percent fail. And the way that this is reconciled to the extent that it is uh the attorney's reconciling is by giving you a memo that says hey put your stuff in the trust which everybody knows you're not going to do because it's a lot more difficult than you think it is all right because you never read the memo there's a million reasons uh bottom line is 
that uh, the way they teach attorneys to uh, handle trust funding is to give people a memo and rely on the pour over will. This is a will that you did, the will that you did when you did the um, when you did the trust that says, if I die and stuff is in my name, put it into the trust. Okay, well, that's what we call probate. And the reason you did the trust was to, uh, hmm, let me guess, avoid probate, right? Well, trust is not going to avoid probate because you didn't put your stuff in the trust. And for folks who try, it's a lot more difficult than you think. And everyone tells you, oh, it's so easy. And then and they're not even talking apples and oranges. It's more BS. Remember, there's four kinds of statements that people can make. This is important. There are four kinds of things that people can say. The first is the truth. The truth is when you accurately report what you see. That's the truth. You look around, you see something, you accurately report it. The second is mistake. You look around, you got it wrong. You didn't see it quite right. But you sincerely report what is not true as if it was true, but you believe it. And that's a mistake. People make mistakes. Then there are lies. Lies are when you look around, you see something, and you, on purpose, say something else. <laughs> That's a lie. I don't think this is any news. All right, then there's the third thing, and this is where so much of what we have to get through is, and that is BS. And that's when people, is it true? Is it not true? They don't really care. They're just trying to get you to do something, and they'll say whatever it takes. It might coincidentally be true. It might be true. It might be false, but that's not the that's not the point at all. We've got Jeff on the line with a trust funding question. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the David Carrier Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. You Love betcha. Show. Thank you. Uh, hey, so a buddy of mine and I are having a debate over whether his his process of funding a trust is is better than than mine, or if they're equal. And okay. basically, what he his his attorney told him to do was. Uh, have the trust that he set up, a revocable trust in this case, be yep. the beneficiary of the yeah. beneficiary of, of the account or yeah. versus having it titled into the trust name. Yeah. They do that. Yeah. See, that's the easy way out, right? That's the BS way out because, oh, just make it the beneficiary. Why the hell would you make it the beneficiary? Because I guarantee you in – I guarantee. Uh, a guarantee worth a cup of coffee. Uh, and a oatmeal raisin cookie. Uh, <laughs> I guarantee you that what the trust says is distribute the assets to the kid without, without, you know, without any protection for the kid or anything, or defense against their creditors. And so what's the point of putting it in the trust that the trust just says give it to the kids? Now, you might say, well, you know, the trust also says that if my buddy, um, if the first beneficiary dies, then it says give it to the next one. Okay, well, you can do the same thing with a beneficiary designation. What did you get from having the trust? The answer is zero. What you need, this is my view of the world. That's why you make the trust, as you're saying, you retitle it to the trust because that way, if you become disabled, now you've got somebody who can manage the asset for you, not using a power of attorney, right? but using a trust, which is much more durable than a power of attorney. Listen, probate judges, they like nothing better. I'm probably exaggerating, but uh, <laughs> nothing better than sunny side, eggs sunny side up and to throw out powers of attorney. And they do it now. You're doing a guardianship. They don't throw out trusts. Much, It's much better to have your trustee managing the assets in case of your disability than having... Someone tried to do it under a power of attorney. Banks hate powers of attorney. Insurance companies, everybody hates powers of attorney. They're very, see, it's not a legal question because legally, technically, they should take the power of attorney. They should honor it. But, but the reality is different. And when people say, well, it's no problem. You've got a power of attorney. More BS. They don't know if it's true or false. They're not telling you what the pluses and minuses are. They're just, they just want you to go away and just use the power of attorney. So I'm coming down on your side because <laughs> you called in. Okay. <laughs> uh, but no, you see, this is how they get around it. And they say, oh, the trust is funded because I changed the beneficiary. It's like that is such nonsense because, number one, it does nothing when you're disabled. 
And the trust is very useful when you're disabled, can be, can be, uh, if it's done correctly. And you, you don't get anything for it. In fact, if you made the trust the beneficiary of life insurance, and I hope, I hope this guy's not saying that, that you should do that. Now you give up the asset protection that you would have. Uh, so here's the deal. Your buddy, what's your buddy's name? Bill. Bill. Good. So, so, uh, Bill has life insurance. Bill owes a million dollars. Bill makes his kid the beneficiary of life insurance. Bill dies. The life insurance goes to the kid and nobody cares that he owes a million dollars. Okay. That's the way it is. I'm just telling mm -hmm. you, that is the way it is. Now, if Bill makes his revocable living trust the beneficiary of that life insurance policy, guess who's liable for Bill's bills, Bill's debts? The trust. So if he gave it directly to the kid, now I'm not advising this, okay, but I'm just saying the unintended consequences. If he makes the trust the beneficiary and the, and the trust says give it to the kid, it's never going to get to the kid because you took this insurance money, which would have passed to the beneficiaries, free of the claims of the creditors. Now you're putting it in the trust. Now it's liable for the claims of the creditors. Okay. So why would you do that? This is why we use an asset protection trust to deliver assets to the kids, right? So it's protected from the claims, from Bill's own claims, but it's also protected from any creditors that the kid may have. So now you you shut the front and the back door. You know what I mean? So you you do both. Mm -hmm. So I, I I keep hearing this. Thank oh, you. just change the beneficiaries. It's like hey, drives you nuts. Well, I, it wasn't a far drive for me anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. You betcha, Jeff. Thank you for calling. Uh, you're listening to the David Carrier Show. I've got two minutes. Rod, what's your uh, beneficiary question? IRA beneficiary question. Actually, actually, it's a little bit like the previous caller. Um, I have a huh? traditional IRA in a bank in, mm -hmm. in, here in Grand Rapids. And uh, years ago, I, I put my mom as the beneficiary. Well, she has passed away. Okay. And, you know, three years later, now I'm just starting to think about it. Sure. But, um, I have a will uh, with a, with a, a beneficiary, you know, mm -hmm. a, the, the will designates who, who's a couple of people who's going to get my assets if there's any left when I sure. die. Sure, sure. What if I just leave my mom, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not, you know, uh, proactive and, and prudent and just leave my mom as the beneficiary who my mom is deceased, by the way. And, sure. And so what happens to that? traditional ira at the time of my death yeah so they ignore they ignore your mom they ignore the beneficiary designation because that person's dead right and what they do right. is they then they and you didn't have any other beneficiaries then it goes into probate and now they're looking for uh your heirs at law okay and there's okay. another reason right. not to do that which i'll get into as soon as as soon as we get back from the break okay Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Uh, we had Rod from uh, Kentwood on the line there wondering about how do I uh, or who should I put as beneficiary? He had his mom. Uh, mom has passed. Um, and that was three years ago. And uh, haven't replaced a beneficiary yet. Okay. Um, you know, we should get around to doing that. If no one is named or if mom is named still on there, let's say... Um, you know, uh, he uh, dies in a car crash today. Beautiful sunny day, not likely, but let's say he does. Uh, or he goes hiking in Utah and falls off the cliff like that poor young woman. Anyway, let's say that happens uh, and he hasn't changed his beneficiary. Now what? And the answer is uh, it goes into probate. The IRA goes into probate. We've had this happen with married couple, even if you can believe it, where they don't have the, the other, uh, their spouse that is not as beneficiary. You know, some HR screw up uh, back at the plant or something, I guess. Anyway, when that happens, then you have to probate the thing just like you'd have to probate any other asset. And then the IRA goes to whomever uh, the heirs appear to be. Now, that could be the spouse. It could be kids. It could be who knows. Um, or, or and by who knows, I mean, in the will, you can say who's going to get that. So if you have a will that says give it to Tom, Dick and Harry. Well, then Tom, Dick, and Harry are going to get the IRA. That's how, you know, that's how that goes. Um, if you haven't, if you don't have a will or a trust or anything, then it just 
then they look for errors at law uh, is how that works. Now, here is why the worst possible thing you can do, the most horrible, awfulest, terriblest thing you can ever do is to put a living, breathing person as beneficiary on the IRA. And I understand everybody tells you to do that. Well, it's the worst, horriblest thing you could possibly do. No good, very bad, awful. And here's why. It's the only way you can put someone in debt. Okay? It's the only thing you can do unilaterally, all by yourself, to put your loved one, presumably you like the person, to put them in debt. And here's how that works. Let's say... You name someone as beneficiary on your IRA, you die, and now they get the IRA. Right? Well, do they get the IRA? You'd say, well, yes, of course they get the IRA. But if you're saying that, that's BS, because you don't know if it's true or not. It happens not to be true, necessarily. Might be true, might not be true. You don't know. When you say, oh, it's, and this is what everybody says, oh, it's going to go right to the beneficiaries. You don't know that. All right. And to say it definitively is BS because you don't know it. All right. Now, you might be mistaken because you believe it. But if you're an expert and you're, you know, financial advisor, banker, whoever, insurance person, lawyer, and you're advising people, don't you have some obligation to figure out whether or not you're spouting BS, whether or not you're mistaken? See, if you're holding yourself out there like, hey, I know all this stuff. I'm really smart. Great. Wonderful. Well, for you, then, it's not a mistake anymore. If you don't know what you're talking about and you tell people we should listen to you and you don't know what you're talking about, that's not a mistake anymore. That's BS, okay? You can't, you can't just not know this stuff and hold yourself out as if you did. And here's with the IRA, and this is a mistake everybody's making, well, most everybody's making, and what you should do about it, my opinion. If you make someone the beneficiary of the IRA, the danger is that bad things have happened to that person. Well, what kind of bad things? Well, how about uh, they hit somebody with their car? How about they got hit with a car? How about they're suffering from dementia? How about they got sued? How about they got divorced? Well, of course, that never happens, right? There's a million things that happen to people, right, that are not good. And when uh, let's say they co-sign for their grand your grandkids student loans, you're gonna leave it to your kid, and they co-sign for the grandkids student loans. Happens all the time. The kids graduate with a de degree in advanced barista. You know they can make the the the, the wonderful uh, and they are wonderful uh, decorations in the foam there. That's wonderful, but I ain't gonna pay four years of MSU or anywhere else for that matter. Okay. And now they've defaulted, and now they come after your kid, and now your kid's got a judgment against them for paying off the advanced barista degree. Whoops, how'd that happen? And, of course, nobody gets divorced anymore, but, but way back in the day, they used to have this thing called divorce, and people would yell at each other, and it'd be terrible, and then they wind up getting divorced, and somebody gets a judgment, one against the other. It's That's awful, too. And now in comes the IRA, all right? Now, tell me this never happens, okay? Tell me it never happens that kids never order. Nothing bad ever happens to my kids. I get it, sure, okay? They never lose control of the car and get in a car accident. Oh, and by the way, uh, you may have noticed that they changed the insurance laws so that you now you are more liable than before for car accidents. You, you, you probably missed that one. That was like a year ago. Anyway, so now your kid's got a judgment against them. You die, and in comes the IRA. Are you with me on this? In comes the IRA. Well, you could get sued all day long and they couldn't take your IRA away from you, your 401k, your 403b, your thrift savings plan, all those things, railroad retirement, all those things, all those retirement plan assets. They can't take it away from you, federal law. But it's also federal law, it's also federal law that an inherited IRA, the rest of those things, is not protected. There's no protection. So your kid gets 200000 of your leftover IRA, and then somebody else gets it. Divorce, bankruptcy, lawsuit, student loans, you name it. The money's coming to the kid. Whoops, somebody takes it away from the kid. The kid does not get the 200000 traditional IRA. Kid does not get the 200000 Somebody else does. You know what your kid gets? 
See if you can guess. A lollipop? No, no lollipop. A cookie? No, they don't get cookies either. Cup of coffee? No. 200000 was going to your kid. 200000 has been taken now by the ex-spouse who has a judgment. Okay, and we can talk about the interplay of divorce law and all the rest of this stuff. But they got a judgment, money judgment. That happens. There was a car accident. There was a nursing home bill. There was a student loan bill, whatever. Okay, the kid gets the 200000 or the 200000 is heading toward the kids. Then the creditors intercept it. The kid does not get the $200, $200,000. What does the kid get? The kid gets a tax bill for the income tax on $200,000, $80,000, state and federal, local too. Who knows? Now you're over 40%. Okay? That's what happens. All right? And when you make someone the beneficiary in the IRA, that's what happens. Okay, you're putting the kid at risk. You say, well, my kid will never get divorced. Okay, believe it if you want. My kid would never co-sign student loans. My kid would never, oh, uh, they would never have a short sale on a house. That would never happen. Really? You believe that? Well, you believe in somebody's BS, okay? It's not true. You have no reason to know. You have no way of knowing whether it's true or false. You can ignore it if you want. You can say, look, I'll take the risk. Uh, that's fine. Well, that's honest. That's truth. But it is a risk. You need to face it and not sweep it under the carpet. That's my perspective. You've been listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Come to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com, and try our Ferris experiment. I think it'll be interesting. <laughs>